Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Great to see you. Beautiful day out there, as someone said. Yeah. Just enjoy this. And if it warms up another 40 degrees, I'd be okay with that, too. <laughs> We're getting there. Well, it's great to be together, and we want to thank the Lord for his presence here with us. And we have come today to celebrate him and meet with him. And uh, we pray that he would be in and through everything that we do. We're going to start by singing this old chorus. We bring the sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. You're welcome to stand or sit. Uh, if you're watching online, you're welcome to stand or sit too, whatever you want to do. Yeah. 
again on, on Tuesday evening and uh, that's at 7 o'clock so everyone is welcome to that. Wednesday from 6 to 7 is kind of our kids club and uh, you're going to have to pre-register. I see some of you are almost old enough to get there, maybe not quite, but uh, you'll have to pre-register for that. It's for ages uh, 40 to 100, no, 4 to 10, 4 to 10. 
And uh, so you'll have to pre-register with, uh, you can talk to myself or, or Bella or Nancy and uh, please uh, just let us know if you want to uh, have some kids that are interested in coming. Also, we're looking forward to Wanda and Lloyd and maybe a few others uh, coming and doing a concert with us in a couple of weeks. And uh, that is so March 14th at 7 o'clock. And there'll probably be a basket at the, at the entrance where you can kind of give a donation or a gift. And, but uh, uh, again, please register with uh, Eva if you'd like to come. We're limited right now to 50 in the sanctuary. So... Uh, We'll try and figure out a way maybe to do two groups. Well, we can't do two groups right now, but we'll, we'll for sure have one group, and we can always put some people in the fellowship hall as well. But if you're wanting to come, uh, like I said, please make sure you register uh, with Eva or myself, and we'll make sure that uh, we get counted in. And yeah, no, it'll be, it'll be fun. We're looking forward to the music. I was... Uh, emailing uh, this week with the Stiff family again and ask, thanking them for, uh, for coming and uh, kind of singing with us and, and uh, they just again sh expressed their appreciation of being able to come and minister and uh, we're going to have them again and I was telling them that we're going to probably start doing music nights on a regular basis. That's something we've talked to, together with the leadership team and as we're able we're going to do that regularly and uh, I think that's just a great thing for our community and for our church family. And uh, some of this, uh, if you're watching online, some of this we're going to live stream as well. And so um, I think it'll just be great to be able to uh, to share the music and share, bless people with those words that inspire and challenge our hearts both. And so we're looking forward to that. Let me pray for us and then we'll continue to sing and worship together. Father, we just take this moment uh, for this uh, time and just thank you for all that you do in our lives. And Lord, we know that there are times in our lives that are very challenging. And we know that for some in our church family, these, that time is right now. And so we pray that you would be with us as we celebrate your strength, your hope, your power in our lives. Lord, we know that we have an enemy. We have someone who wants to tear down and destroy. But Lord, we also know that you're the one that builds up. You bring hope and you bring life. And so, Lord, we pray against the work of the enemy. We pray that you would move in powerful ways. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to be with us as we gather together today to worship you and bring you honor and praise and thank you for what you are doing in and through our lives. So, Lord, Come invade this time and this space. Lord, whether we're here together in our church building or whether we're watching online, Lord, would you speak into our hearts? We've come today to meet with you and to hear from you. Lord, we know that we need your strength, your hope, your wisdom to work through these days of challenge and difficulty. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the mighty God and in the end, you are the one who wins. And so we thank you, Lord, that we are on that side. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue to pour your strength and your power through us as your body, as your church. Jesus, we pray this in your wonderful name. Amen. Let's sing this great song. My hope is built on nothing less.
centered around Easter and some of the events that happened around Jesus' death and resurrection. And it kind of applies it to our own hearts and lives and applies what Jesus did to us. And that's what I like about the words of this song. The chorus especially, Oh, your grace so free, it washes over me. You have made me new and now life begins with you. Amen. Begins in Jesus. And so we're going to try it again. And uh, so as you kind of pick up the parts of it, please join in and we'll learn it together uh, as we go over the next couple of weeks.
and our joys, who hears as we lift our voices to him in praise and honor, we have a God who hears. And as we pray today, we want to pray for people within our church family, within our community. Um, we want to pray for those who are struggling and uh, pray for those who are uh, dealing with very kind of disturbing challenges in their life. And uh, pray for those who need healing, those who need strength. Uh, Bobby brought me a name, Jim Gallant. Uh, some of you will know Jim, who's asked for prayer from our church and asked that God would move in his life as he faces some difficult times. We want to pray for him and pray for others as well that are dealing with struggles. And, and we're thankful that 
we can pray together and as we pray together we believe that God moves and he moves powerfully and so let's bow our heads and just talk to the Lord together this morning ask him to move father we're grateful that you are the God who hears us you hear our hearts cry you hear what we're going through you know the challenges that we face you know the joys that we experience Lord thank you for family just being together, Teresa and I, with our grandkids yesterday, what a joy it is to, to be in their lives, to be a part of their lives, and just to sit and enjoy, uh, just enjoy them. We thank you for the gifts, the many gifts that you bring into our lives. We thank you for our families. And Lord, we also know that there are times when there are challenges in families and difficulties, not necessarily from ourselves, but outward things that happen. And we thank you, Lord, that we can talk to you and we can, uh, as we see sometimes the work of the enemy, Lord, we can, we can fight against that in your name, believing that you have the strength and the power to move. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can stand in the gap. We can stand in that place where we are kind of the person uh, that... Uh, pushes back on the enemy's ploys and, and all the things that can come into our lives. So we pray today, Lord, for our families. We pray that you would keep them, that you would protect them, that you would help them. Lord, no matter what they're going through, Lord, you know the situation that I'm thinking about right now. And Lord, I come in your name and ask that you would destroy the work of the enemy in this situation. Lord, you are the great one. You are the power. You are the one that we can come to. Father, I thank you also that we can call on you to, to heal people, to, to bring strength and to bring hope into their lives. And we do pray for Jim Gallant. We pray, Lord, that you would be with him, that you would bring healing to his life. Lord, that somehow you would resolve what is happening in his, in his mind and in his heart. Lord, would you be with him? in a mighty way, Lord. We pray over him in your name, Jesus. We pray over him and ask you to move in his life and his situation. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask. Lord, we thank you that we can come to you and we can bring our prayers and petitions as your word says, those things that we struggle with and also those things that we find great joy in. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you walk with us. You are our strength. You are the one that we hold on to, Lord, when things are really tough. And we pray, Lord, for those who are struggling right now. We pray for your hand upon their lives. May they just know your presence. May they just know you close by them. Your comfort. Lord, just the just the ability to get through another day. Lord, pray, we pray that you would be there in a mighty way in their lives. We pray for healing, Lord, for those who are sick. Lord, we pray for forgiveness for those who have fallen and, and are moving away from you. Lord, restore their hearts as they, as they repent and turn back. Lord, we pray that you would continue to to move in situations where there are addictions and, and other challenges in people's lives. Lord, bring freedom, bring hope. Lord, move in mighty ways. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are our rock. You are our fortress. As we sang before, in Christ alone our hope is found. And it is in you, Lord, that our hope is found. So we bring each other to you this morning. We lift each other to you in prayer and ask, Lord, that you would be with your people in a mighty and powerful way. Lord, we just want to allow just a few moments of silence this morning, time to focus on who you are. And Lord, maybe hear from you or lift a prayer to you.
we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught the first disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Well, I think those high notes on that hymn just <clears throat> kind of did my voice in a little bit. I've got to get my, got to get my. Teresa would say I got to get my voice back in uh, shape. <clears throat> Well, I hope you've had a good week. I think uh, we saw maybe the worst winter storm, uh, a winter storm of the year this uh, earlier on in this week. And uh, as, uh, as they would say here on the island, it was blowing a gale, wasn't it? Blowing a gale. And there was a bunch of snow that was kind of mixed in with it as well. And I think we had our lane blown out at least twice just from the drifting and stuff like that. I'm not sure if uh, you are a hockey fan or not, but I saw a headline this week that is sure to bring some cheers to some people and maybe some boos from others. And here's, here's what this headline read. It said, sorry, Montreal, the Toronto Maple Leafs are the NHL's best team. I wasn't. I didn't. I was just a quote. I'm just quoting what I read. Well, I kind of the article kind of went on to talk about the winning record of the team and some great players they had and some untapped potential that the Leafs had. Now I know that if you're a Canadian fan, you probably will not agree with this, and we've already seen that. But my grandson, Brayden, Braden, would probably be one of those people that would wholeheartedly say, yes, yes, that's true. He and my son-in-law are really big Leaf fans, huge Leaf fans. You can usually tell a true fan by how they talk about their team. Also, you know, by the clothes that they wear and some stuff around the house that usually represents the team that they like as well as the importance that they put in kind of carving out time to watch their team play hockey or football or whatever it is. A sold out fan is there if their team is winning and doing well, but also they're there, like Blair, if their team is losing <laughs> and seeming to be fighting through many obstacles. But we all know that there are some people who are bandwagon jumpers. Uh, do you still use that term, band? I don't know if we still do. Uh, some who are big fans when things are going well with the team, but when things aren't going well, well, they're gone. They're gone. And as I looked at the characters of Easter, and as we kind of check out those people who were there to see and experience Jesus' death and resurrection in real time. You know, the villains and heroes, the cowards and crooks. Some of those who participated in what I think is life's or history's biggest event were sold out on Jesus. They were sold out. But there were others who were sellouts, bandwagon jumpers. They seemed to be committed, but when it came to crunch time, they're gone. Maybe, maybe the question we should ask ourselves is, are we sold out for Jesus? Not just saying the words, but living them out in our daily lives. Or, or would you be willing to sell Jesus out? You know, like if someone offered you a million dollars to stop going to church. Or turn away from following God. How'd you react to that? Are we sold out or are we negotiable when it comes to our relationship with Jesus? Are we 
all in when it comes to being his follower and his disciple. When I say the name Judas Iscariot in connection with the death of the resurrection and and in connection with the death and resurrection of Jesus, what, what kind of comes to your mind? I'm thinking probably betrayer. Well, he betrayed Jesus with a kiss, kiss which was kind of the way of greeting for close friends and family back in the day. Or it could be that you think about 30 pieces of silver. Now, that was the amount that Jews, Judas got for giving Jesus up to the religious leaders. Maybe you could even use the term sellout. I mean, he sold out his friend and his leader for basically four months wages. But, but would you use the word disciple to describe Judas? Remember, Judas was handpicked by Jesus to be one of the 12 disciples. Before he became the betrayer, he was both supporter and dedicated follower, along with the other 11 men who traveled and ministered with Jesus, Judas gave up a lot to be one of the disciples or apprentices of this godly, in, in turn, I can't even say the word, godly preacher. He was there, Judas was there when Jesus empowered and sent the twelve to preach and teach and to heal and to cast out demons in his name. So, you could say Judas was a gospel preacher and a miracle worker. Hmm. That's interesting to think about. He was there. He was there when Jesus raised people from the dead. You know, the young daughter of the synagogue leader named Jairus, and also Lazarus, who was dead in a tomb four days before he was miraculously raised to life by Jesus. And miraculous, and Lazarus would have been someone that Judas would have known well because Jesus and his disciples visited Lazarus's house many times in their travels. Judas was also there with the cheering crowd at the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. On that day, I'm sure it seemed like the whole world was behind Jesus and ready to crown him the new king over their land. This was a day of hope and excitement, of anticipation of what God was going to do for the nation of Israel. Here's an interesting thing. Judas was trusted by the other disciples and by Jesus to be the treasurer of the movement that was happening around this powerful teacher and miracle worker. This was a position of prestige and trust and even though there are comments later about his love for money, still at least for a time, Judas was considered a man of integrity. So what happened? Like what happened? What choices led Judas to become the most famous betrayer in all of history? The person to sell out the Son of God for the price of a slave. But I want to read some of Matthew chapter 26 today. and It talks a little bit about Judas' betrayal and also the Last Supper Jesus had with his disciples. We know that this was the last meal that they had together before Jesus' arrest and trial and crucifixion. And it was during the celebration of Passover, which commemorates God's rescuing his people from slavery and bondage. And just as a lamb was sacrificed to save the Israelites, Jesus' sacrifice saves and rescues us from the bondage of sin. He is our rescuer and savior. The Bible section that we, we are reading talks about Judas selling Jesus out. But it also shows the interaction between Jesus and Judas and that Jesus knew what Judas was going to do. So check it out. I'm starting to read at verse 14 of Matthew chapter 26. It says, Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, 
What are you willing to give me if I deliver him, Jesus, over to you? And so they counted out for him 30 pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. I just want to pause here for a minute. Because the disciple John records in his eyewitness account of Jesus' life something that Matthew does not. And he says it's kind of prior to Jesus and the disciples, which included Judas, by the way, sitting down at the table for the Passover supper. It says that Jesus took out a basin of water and towel and washed the disciples' feet. This is something that typically the servant of the household would do, not the master or leader. However, when no one stepped up to do this humble act of serving, Jesus did, and he washed all of the disciples' feet, including those of his betrayer, Judas. This picture of humility and servant leadership is hard for me to get out of my head. Jesus was not only God, come in human flesh, but he also knew Judas was going to betray him, and yet he served and loved him. The Son of God humbling himself before the very one who would betray him to death. Could you do that? I mean, I struggle to talk to those who betray me, never mind to serve them and love them. Well, check out what happens next. Maybe it will help us to understand the choices that led to Judas' betrayal of his friend and teacher. Verse 20, it says this. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. Well, they were very sad and began to say to one another, Surely you don't say one after the other, sorry. Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of God will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. And Jesus answered, You have said so. There's something about Matthew's description of what happened between Jesus and Jewish Jesus and Judas here that is powerful and disturbing at the same time. But I want you to notice, I want you to notice the disciples' response to Jesus' revelation that one of them would betray him. It says that they were very sad, and they began to say one to another, surely you don't mean me, Lord. And you can kind of imagine the question going around the table, being repeated over and over again, surely you don't mean me, Lord. surely you don't mean just over around the table. But, but did you notice that Judas asked the question differently? He said, surely you don't mean me rabbi. Rabbi, it means teacher. Lord means boss or master. Am I reading too much into this? Or did Judas acknowledge Jesus as a great teacher, but not as Lord of his life? All the other disciples said, Lord. Judas says, rabbi means teacher. And we know from other things written in the Bible that Judas loved money. And is it possible that Jesus was not the Lord of his life, but in fact money had become his master? 
really the thing that he was sold out to. There may have been other reasons that Judas betrayed Jesus, but this is foundational to him selling him out. Jesus never became Lord or number one in his heart. There had been other things that had taken God's place as most important in his life. We could ask ourselves the question, what is most important in our lives? Is it Jesus? Or have we put something else in the place that only Jesus should have? As I read this, I, I began to wonder, as sometimes I do, why? Why did Jesus announce to his friends and followers around the table at the Last Supper that someone was going to betray him? I mean, it's a bit dramatic, don't you think? Or was there something more to it? We know that Jesus could see into people's hearts. He can see into our hearts as well. And the Holy Spirit can give us this same gift as we serve and follow him. Jesus could see what was happening in Judas's heart, the struggles, the hurts, maybe the anger. I think Jesus knew that Judas' heart had moved away from God. His heart had moved from sold out to sell out. And I think Jesus, in those moments around that table, was giving Judas one last chance. One last opportunity to change the course of his life. To choose to go from betrayer to believer. From sellout to sold out. But Judas rejected Jesus' offer. And another eyewitness account of Jesus' life says that as Jesus, Judas took the bread that Jesus gave, and as Judas made the choice to sell out his heart, it says that Satan entered into him. For me, this is a bit sobering. You know, we all end up serving God or the enemy of God. We all do. The choices we make here and now determine not only the course of our life on planet Earth, but also into eternity. Judas sold out to money, or maybe something else besides Jesus. And eventually he ended up serving Satan. You and I, if you and I reject God's offer to follow him wholeheartedly, you will end up serving the enemy of God. Maybe not in this life. It may be after you die. You and I have that choice to make. So the question is, are you sold out or are you selling out? I'm asking for a friend. Jesus' invitation is to have him to be Lord of our lives. And I have found that his authority over my life his lordship over my life is not troublesome or difficult, but rather filled with joy and hope. And having spent time in my life serving other gods, small g, I can say that selling out to other things leads to despair and bondage. But Jesus came that we might have Let me finish with this. I believe, right from the bottom of my heart, that if Judas had come to Jesus, even after he betrayed him, and asked for forgiveness and freedom, Jesus would have forgave him and restored him. Right then and right there. The ending of Jesus, Judas' story would have been very different. So no matter what your past is, and whether you are sold out to Jesus, but your heart's kind of gone off track and been captured by other idols, or you are right now firmly in the enemy's camp, I want to tell you that it is time for you to invite Jesus into your heart and decide who you want as Lord in your life. 
there is time for you and I to ask God's forgiveness when we put other things where Jesus' rightful place is, as king of our lives. And if you're hearing this today, and you want to ask Jesus to be Lord and rescuer of your life, all you have to do is reach out to him. That's it. And he will show you the way from sellout to sold out. He always responds to the cries of our hearts. He always does. He always forgives. And he always sets people free from the grasp of the enemy if they ask. But there will come a time, and this is what's sobering, just like in Judah's case, where it'll be too late. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your place in our lives. We thank you, Lord, that we have a God-shaped hole in our hearts. And our lives only work when you are king of our hearts, king of our lives. You are the one that we are made to serve and worship. You are the one that we are made to have king in our hearts. You are the one that brings life and fullness. You are the one that brings strength and wholeness. Jesus, you are the one that should be in our hearts as Lord and Savior. And we thank you, Lord, that all you ask is that we come to you with repentant hearts and ask you to come into our lives. That's all you ask. You're the one that fills us. You're the one that draws us. And you're the one that gives us power and strength and hope. So we thank you, Jesus, that you draw us into being sold out for you. And we are, Lord, because of all that you do in and through our lives. You are, you're the one. You are our God. You are our strength and you are our rescuer. So Jesus, today we are thankful that we can come to you no matter where we are in our lives, no matter what's happening, and we can give our hearts to you. Lord, we pray all this in your wonderful name. Amen. I'm going to close by singing this pretty familiar little chorus. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. You're welcome to sit or stand or Whatever you want to do at this point.
each of the hearts that are listening here and watching online and you know how you have spoken into each person's life. Lord, I don't have a lot to do with that. Your Holy Spirit is the one who speaks. Your Holy Spirit is the one who kind of taps on our heart's door and, and you're the one that calls us to respond to you. So Lord, I pray that you would open our hearts to what you want to do in each of our lives today. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to move in and through us and that, Lord, that you would bless each person, each family represented. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are an awesome king. You are the one who captures our hearts. You are the lover of our souls and that you invite us to come and be part of your table. I pray all these things, Jesus, in your wonderful name. 